Hey guys, how's it going? Today's video, I'm gonna show you the top 10 Excel formulas that you will need when you first start getting into using Excel. That's what we're doing to today's video. Hope you enjoy, subscribe, let's get into it. Okay, here we go, we're in Excel. Here's a load of data, here's 10 formulas sort of 10 formulas that I think everybody should know when they start using Excel. First one, equal sub. So this will be used when you want to sum up a certain column. So instead of having to go equals and then click on individual cells, you click equals, sum, open brackets, and then what you can do is select the column by pressing control space, okay? Press enter and that will give you the sum formula. Now, a variation on sum is if you want to add up a column, but you only want to select items which fit a specific criteria. So for instance, if I want to sum up everything that is, uh, you know, what I want to sum up all the black chairs, for instance, I can use a sum if formula. So the way we do that is equals sum if, select the range that you want to pick. So for instance, color, that's the range, the criteria is black, and then the column is column H, and there you have a sum if formula where you're picking out all the values that are effectively black in color. Now the next formula I'm going to show you is a VLOOKUP formula. Now a VLOOKUP will effectively find a certain criteria, you know, a certain text within a set of data, and it can pull out a value that's associated with that specific criteria. So for instance, if I want to find from this table the red chair, you know, how much revenue is generated from the red chair, I can use a VLOOKUP formula. So you can see it's red there and the revenue I want to pull out is 605,000. But if I want to use a formula, I can do a VLOOKUP. So to show you how this works, you do equals VLOOKUP, open brackets. Now you look up the value for this time, I want to look up the value red. So I can pick red. Because it's a text, I have to do quotation marks. Then I click comma, select the table array. So this is from column F to H. Now the first column always has to be the column where you're trying to find the specific criteria. So for instance, red, you can see it's in column F. So that has to be the first column. And now the next, and then I press comma, and then the next item is says column index number. So that means how many columns across would I want to pick the value out of? So the first, so I want to select three. So that means what three across from F. So F, G, H, three columns. Now that number has to be within the range that I've selected. I couldn't select four because four would be F, G, H, I. And you can see that blue column bar hasn't been assigned to all of those four. So it has to be within either one to three range. And then when you go range lookup, you want to click false which means exact match, as you can see here, not approximate match. Click enter and you can see it pulls out 605,150. Now the next one I want to show you is an if function. Now an if function is basically a, a rule that you can use. So, and it will select a certain criteria, select a certain value, or give you back a certain option, depending on if that rule is correct or not. So what do I mean by that? Well, you can see here the price of this item is £163, let's say. A form, if I want to pick a rule out, I can say if, is this item greater than 100? Now, obviously it is greater than 100, so if, I, if it is, I want it to come up with the letter Y, meaning yes. But if it's false, you do comma, if it's false, pull out the letter N. And you can see this if function is basically working on the basis of the first, the first thing that you put within the bracket is the logical test. So for instance, is it greater than 100? Then you put a comma, then the next item you pick is what would I want to generate from this formula if it is correct, which is a letter Y. And then the next comma afterwards, you write what would I want to generate if this is incorrect. Then you press enter and you can see that rule is yes. So that is the, how do you use an if function. The next one I want to show you is this variation on an if function, which is if the formula that you generate is an error, it will allow you to s direct it into another formula. So what do I mean by that? Well, for instance, if I want to use a VLOOKUP formula and I know, and I'm trying to search for 
the color yellow. Now there may not be a color yellow in this column. I don't. I know there isn't a color yellow. So I can use an if error function before the lookup function. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I go if error, first if I actually I'll show you this by showing a vlookup. If I do a vlookup and search for yellow in this table array, so I'm searching for yellow. You can see it comes back with an NA because there's actually isn't yellow in that table. Now, what I can do is put before this formula an if error function. What that basically says is if that if there isn't yellow, if there isn't, you know, and it's going to generate me an error, I don't want to see an error. I just want you to show me the number zero. And as you can see, instead of the NA now, because I put if error before it, and then bracketed the entire formula, it now generates me a zero because I'm saying if that generates whatever I'm doing, if that formula generates an error, then circumvent that and put a zero in its place. The next formula I'm going to show you is a subtotal formula. Now this is useful when there is a filter on a set of data. So you can see above I've put sum, which is great. That will add up the entire column H but for instance, if I had a filter on this data, so I'm going to go on to data filter, and I want to filter for all the chairs, you can see this number stays the same. If I take this filter off, and now I use a subtotal formula, when I filter on the table, it will actually alter the value of the subtotal because a subtotal is a subsection of whatever table you filtered. So if I choose subtotal equals subtotal, you can see there's a range of different things that I want to do. I just want to sum up the columns. So I want to choose nine. Then I want to click and you can see I could choose one, two, three, depending on what kind of subtotal you want to enact. You can do min, max on values. But say I want to just sum the the column, then you press comma, select the range, so column H, press enter, and you can see it comes up with the same value, 1.18 billion. Now if I select chair from the filter, you can see how the subtotal has changed now. So now it only adds up, you can see now it only adds up to 41 million as opposed to 1.18 billion. And that is a very useful formula. The next one is count. So if you want to know how many items are in a list, so for instance, instead of having to go onto the table and selecting the range like this, and you can see down here it says count 217. If I just, if I just want to have a formula that can produce that, I can use equals count select the range like this, and it will add up 217 which is the same count we had before. The next formula, which is quite useful, is left, right, mid. So I'm just going to show you one of these, but effectively what this does is it will pull out a certain number of letters within a cell. So either, so for instance, you see black here. This comes in useful uh, on occasion. If I want to just select the first three letters of that, of the text within that cell, I can choose left select on the text, so for instance this, and then I can select three, and it will choose the letters three from the left of that text cell. So then you can see it brings out BLA. If I choose right, you can see it's going to choose the last three letters, and then when you choose the formula mid, it'll pick the text and it'll say, right, start number, start three across, so start with B, L, A, so start with A, that's three across, and then pick out two letters from the letter A, and you can see it will bring out A, C, which is three letters across, and then bring out two letters from three across. Conditional formatting isn't specifically a formula, but it is very useful, and it's just basically this button up here, and what I want to show you is you can use it to say, right, show me using a color, every, you know, if there's a duplicate value in this list. So for instance, when I click on conditional formatting, I can go hell, highlight cell rules and go duplicate values. Actually, I'm not going to choose duplicate values. I'm going to say highlight cell rules if it's equal to black. Click OK. And you can see it's 
put, it's highlighted all the values here that come out as black. Now you can do that on values. You can say if it's higher than say 400,000 in this column, you could then therefore pull out, you know, it'll highlight all the values higher than 400,000 in, in this column. And then you can filter the row and then you can see I could choose, for instance, to filter on a cell color and then you can sort of subsection the list and uh, and then you'll have all the black items because those are the conditional formatting. So it's a different way of selecting a list of items and then filtering from that specific color. So then we undo this. And the next one I wanna show you is how to pivot the data correctly. So for instance, on this set, I can select this data, go insert pivot table, okay. And now I can pivot a load of data, but if I pivot, you can see if I pull it all into rows, what it does is it pulls down this long list of items. Now I'll bring in the revenue, for instance, like this. So that's how you pull through a pivot table in a simplistic way. But what I wanna show you is how you get this into a much more user-friendly view, because this just looks like a, a load, it's a huge list of data across two columns. It's not useful. If you click on design, you can then go to this show in tabular form. And what it will do is it pulls the data into a much more user-friendly view. Now you may not want subtotals, so the way you do that is you click on this subtotals, don't show subtotals, then you click on grand total, which at the bottom, what you should be able to find is a grand total. Now you may not want a grand total because for instance, if you were adding up this column, you end up duplicating, you end up twice the value of what it would be. So what you can do is click on grand totals, off grand totals, and you see now you have a long list of data. Now. You may also want to add in and repeat all items. You can click on repeat all items and now you've created a much more user-friendly looking set of data. And that's it. Those are 10 formulas. The last two aren't really formulas, kind of formulas, but not really. But those are the 10 formulas that I think that you need to get started on Excel. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, check in the comment section underneath or the description to this video because I I do have a downloadable link to an Excel document that you can grab, which shows you all the types of formulas that you will need to get started. I have a specific video that you can download, which will help you with those formulas. It's a lot more extensive than this video. Um, so if you find that useful, please do check that out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.